Okay, so the right of establishment, as you know, also covers the rights uh, conferred on companies, and you will be reading it from your chapters. Then we move to the um, free movement of services. Um, the first source is again the founding treaty. Articles 56 and 57 provides for the principle of free movement of services on temporary basis when a person established in a member state moves to another member state to provide or to receive services on temporary basis, he is covered by Article 56 and 57 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union. Um, Article 57 defines services and applies the principle of equal treatment to the service provider. Therefore, the structure of um, Articles 56 and 57 in respect of equal treatment do not much differ from the provisions as regards free movement of workers and establishment. However, for many years in the EU, free movement of services has been seen as poor in relation to other freedoms. Can you imagine why? You know the reason. Why free movement of services were seen as poor or subordinate when you compare it with other freedoms provided in the founding treaties? You know the answer. Yes, Denis? Uh, is it because it only provides for temporary basis? Um, no. Umut? I was going to say the No. When we stated that last week, when are the provisions as regards services applied? When? When a situation is not governed by the provisions on other freedoms. Okay? That is why we stated that last week, as you would remember. The provisions as regards services apply where only if the situation concerned is not governed by free movement of goods, persons, or capital. Okay? Therefore, that is why traditionally free movement of services has been seen as subordinate to other freedoms. However, today services include or cover a wide range of situations. And in this regard, we differentiate between three um, situations. First, you can state those. When we speak about freedom of services, we may mean three different things. What are they? Service provider. Exactly. The first situation is where a service provider can move from one member state 
to another to provide professional services. Therefore, in the first situation, the service provider may move from one member state to another to provide professional services, such as lawyers, such as doctors, such as architects, when they go to another member state on temporary basis to provide professional services. Yes? Uh, does the other uh, services, for example, of goods, um, supplies a broader um, protection area? Because you said that it is subordinate to the others. The reason is that, according to the founding treaties, the Articles 56, 57, as regards provision of services, only apply when the situation does not fall under different uh, um, freedoms. Uh, they are more specifically provided in the treaties. That is why. Hmm? This is a more general freedom when you compare it with the others. Second, the second situation, service exactly, when, the, when a service receiver or as the service receiver can also move from one member state to another. <coughs> For example, in search of health care or tourism or education. And third, <coughs> exactly, neither the provider nor the receiver moves. However, the service itself moves, for example, over the web, such as internet gambling. Dessert. The service itself, for example, inter uh, over the web, such as internet gambling. Gambling? gambling? Yes, mm -hmm. online gambling. Is service no, service provider is in his own member state. Service receiver. Sorry. The service provider is in his own member state. The service receiver also in his own member state. Which moves here over the internet? The service. The service. When you speak about service receivers or service providers uh, of free movement, then they have to travel from one member state to another. On the, on the online services, there is no uh, um, travel by people. The service uh, moves. This may happen through emails. This may happen over the web, by phone or by cable. For instance, one of the most important decisions of the Court of Justice on this is Alpen Investments of 93. The decision of the Court of Justice in Alpin Investments. Here, the Dutch Ministry of Finance prohibited a Dutch company from telephoning, calling, phoning the individuals in the Netherlands and in other member states to offer them various financial services. The Dutch Ministry of Finance prohibited the, a Dutch company from telephoning individuals in the Netherlands or in other member states to offer them various financial services unless they had the prior in Turkish the prior written approval 
of the clients. The Court of Justice provided that Article 56 covered services which the provider offered by phone to potential receivers, customers, established in other member states without moving from the member state in which the service provider was established. Um, one important thing about the provision of services under the treaty provisions is that Articles 56 and 57, please read these provisions from the founding treaties when you get ready for the final exam. Articles 56 and 57 only provide rights for service providers. Therefore, we, we, we have been speaking about service receivers, we have been speaking about the service itself, but Articles 56 and 57 only provide rights for service providers. So, how do we understand that service receivers also have rights or uh, the service itself is also included here in this free movement? How do we know? Yes, Eylül? Exactly, from the decisions of the Court of Justice. Therefore, uh, it is the Court of Justice which has interpreted Articles 56 and 57 first as making a distinction between free movement of service providers and service receivers, although the provision only is confined to service providers. And second, the court also provided that the service itself is also here included. Therefore, this decision was um, uh, about the situations where neither provider or the receiver travels. And in 1992 uh, and 1993, in the joint cases, <coughs> <clears throat> Luisi and Carbone, who will make a presentation about that? Not here. The Court of Justice provided that the um, service receivers are also included within this free within this type of free movement. In this in these joint cases, two Italians were fined for taking more money out of Italy than the currency regulations permitted. They were going to other member states. They planned to go to other member states as tourists and also to receive medical treatment. The court the European Court of Justice said that the provision, the provisions on the freedom of services also covers freedom to receive services. 
it explained that the freedom of uh, the freedom to receive services is a necessary part necessary corollary of the right of providing services therefore according to the court individuals receiving medical treatment and those um, traveling for education or tourists traveling to other member states are also covered by the provisions of free movement of services since they are service receivers. Please don't forget about this case law, Louisiane Carbone, where the European Court of Justice provided for, provided that service receivers are also included. Do you know why? Because we will be using this, we will be discussing this case in the second semester when we interpret or when we speak about free movement of services uh, under uh, Ankara Agreement and under the Association Council decisions and under the additional protocol where we speak about the right of um, free movement or the free movement of services for Turkish nationals, okay? There as well, the additional protocol only provides for freedom of services. It does not make a differentiation between service providers and service receivers. Okay, one question for you then. In the Louisiana Carbone, where there was no such distinction also between free movement of ser sorry, freedom of service providers and freedom of service receivers, the Court of Justice underlined the importance of the fact that service receivers must also here be included. Hmm? So it included tourists, it included students, it included people who take medical treatment and go from, travel from one member state to another uh, under this type of freedom. Now the question is, in the legal rules of Turkey-EU relations, in Ankara Agreement in the, and in the additional protocol which provides specific rules for this especially, there is no differentiation either. Do you think that we can apply this interpretation of the Court of Justice there as well? Yes, thank okay. you. Yes, because for the reason of the court, we said that it's a necessary part of providing services hmm. to uh, give the right uh, to the service providers and the service receivers as well. So uh, if we make the connection, if it's a necessary part of providing services, it will be the same for, for uh, Turkey and EU relations as well. So I think we should do the same. Mm. You are right, we thought the same. <laughs> However, However the Court of Justice said no. Why? Uh, okay, you, we will be this, I think this is the most interesting part of, of the second semester, uh, that we will be dealing with the decisions of the Court of Justice as regards Turkish nationals. Uh, the, the, there, is an, there is an important case law where the Court of Justice interpreted free movement of services. There, the case law was about free movement of service providers like the provision itself. Uh, however, one day there was a preliminary reference to the Court of Justice about a Turkish national who would like to visit he, her, I think it was her stepfather in one of the member states. And the question was whether she could have enjoyed free movement of service receivers because she would have traveled as a tourist. Uh, we thought that the same interpretation may be made because here the interpretation since the Luisa Carbone is so settled that the service receivers are also included. The Court of Justice said, sorry, 
This is an interpretation of an international agreement and not the founding treaty. So we now know that different pieces of legislation can be interpreted differently by the Court of Justice. If the Court of Justice, uh, that was Leila Ejam Demirkan decision of the Court of Justice, and there, if the court had decided that tourists were also included, Turkish tourists were also included uh, or and, and enjoy free movement of services, what would be the first result of that? No need of visa to travel EU member states. Who? For Turkish tourists. For Turkish everyone. Turkish nationals. Hmm? So uh, this has been criticized very much in academia, this decision of the Court of Justice, but this is the reality that the court decided as such. There is an important case on different aspects of free movement of services and free movement of workers, as you will be seeing later. All right? <coughs> so when we speak about services, the first question is, what is a service? According to the uh, Article 57, a service has three elements. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Free movement of services, free movement of services have three elements according to Article 57. We need services, we need remuneration, and third, we need temporary nature. Article 57, paragraph 1, gives examples of different services, which includes activities of industrial nature or activities of craftsmen or in activities of commercial character. However, with the case law of the Court of Justice, this list has been expanded. According to Luis de Carbone, touristic activities, educational activities, medical activities are included or transmission of a television signal or a signal by a cable TV or lotteries, insurance and sports activities are all services. Is this numerous clauses? No, no, no. This is all I expanded by the case law, therefore it can also expand. Um, secondly, services are, according to Article 57, services are normally provided for remuneration. This requirement is provided to exclude the gratuitous, gratuitous for free services. Yeah? For free activities from the scope of the founding treaties. Therefore, certain services, as a part of the welfare system or welfare state, 
have presented important problems for EU law. For instance, as regards state education. In Humble, a decision given by the Court of Justice in 1986, state education did not constitute a service because the state was not seeking a gainful activity it was only fulfilling its duties because the same considerations <coughs> do not exist for private education there is different case law here. In the decision of Wyss, in 1992, the Court of Justice provided that private education could constitute a service when it was essentially financed out of private funds, in particular by the students or by their parents, and where the service provider sought an economic profit. Third element is that uh, is the temporary nature of services. And this is the key factor distinguishing services <coughs> from the right of establishment. According to the European Court of Justice, the temporary nature of the activities has to be determined by taking into consideration first the duration of the provision of the service how long <coughs> second its regularity third its continuity and fourth periodicity. But however, as we have stated last time, the service providers can still equip themselves with necessary facilities, necessary equipment such as Offices, chambers, consulting rules, if they are necessary for performing the services. <coughs> According to the Court of Justice, there is no magic rule to differentiate between the services and the right of establishment. The, court, the national courts have to make this differentiation on case-by-case -case basis. According to the primary and secondary legislation, the service providers and service receivers enjoy certain rights in the EU. <coughs> the 
the first group of rights is the right of entry, sorry, the right of departure, entry, and residence. Um, as we have stated last week, these rights mentioned are today governed by the Citizens' Rights Directive, in particular, for the service providers who go to another member state for less than three months. Therefore, for those service providers going to another member state for less than three months, <coughs> the Citizens' Rights Directive, as we have spoken last week, will apply as any other migrant but other service providers going for longer periods are not covered by this directive. Um, the writers say this is not important because mostly for the service uh, providers, going for long, for, for the service providers, the European Court of Justice rely on treaty provisions. According to the Court of Justice, the requirement to obtain an additional identity document other than the, a passport or an ID is the breach of Article 56 or, for instance, deportation of a service provider or a service receiver on the ground that he did not present a valid passport or a valid ID card was found in breach of Article 56. According to the Court of Justice, the right of entry to a member state to provide a service includes the individuals, the companies, and their workforce. Therefore, according to the court, the companies may also bring their workforce to provide a service in another member state. And the workforce may even include third country nationals. The requirement here is that the third country national should not seek access to the workforce or sorry to the labor market of the host state and should go back to his country of residence once the contract is finished 
Therefore, according to the Court of Justice, free movement uh, or uh, free movement of service providers include individuals, companies, and even their workforce. A company who would like to uh, provide services in another member state may also bring its workforce in Turkish workforce uh, to another member state. The workforce may include also third country nationals. Uh, third country national is used as a concept to mean foreigners in EU law. Okay, instead of foreigners, mostly we say third country nationals to mean the non-nationals of that state. Therefore, they may also include, the workforce may also include the third country nationals, provided that the workers would go back to their country of origin and they would not seek access to the labor market of that member state. I will take the questions later. Second aspect, or second right, is right of access to the market in services in other member states. Right of access to the market in services in other member states. According to Article 57, uh, discriminatory measures are prohibited. Therefore, both, um, as we, uh, sorry, the um, discrimination on, based on nationality, both for service providers and service receivers are prohibited under Article 57. Meaning, discrimination based on nationality, meaning whether the person is national or a migrant in that member state. However, under Article 56, direct discrimination <coughs> based on place of establishment is also prohibited. According to the Court of Justice, direct discrimination based on nationality and place of establishment is governed by Article 56 and such national rules can only be saved based on the derogations provided under Article 52, including public policy, public security, and public health. We call this also distinctly applicable measures. Discriminating based on nationality and place of establishment. Secondly, indistinctly applicable measures are also prohibited. These measures are the ones which impose additional burden on foreign service providers. They also breach Article 56 unless they are saved by overriding reasons of public interest. For instance, in a decision 
Commission versus Germany. Commission versus Germany. The court found that the German rules requiring insurance companies to provide insurance in Germany to be both established and authorized in Germany, <coughs> breached Article 56 and 57 of the treaty. Because according to the court, such requirements increase the costs for the insurance companies that would like to provide a service in Germany or that would like to provide services in Germany only on occasional basis. Okay, I think it's enough for today.